The oldest rocks in our area are metamorphic, formed about 1.7 billion years ago during the assembly of an ancient supercontinent called Columbia, near the equator, thousands of miles from where we are today. Supercontinents form as tectonic activity brings multiple plates together around a land mass. The oceanic portions of the plates are subducted under the major land mass. If there are other land masses on the colliding plates, like an island chain in an ocean or even a small continent, they are scraped off the subducting plate and added to the margin of the larger land mass, which grows as a result. Geologists have concluded that as Columbia formed, a chain of large offshore islands was carried tectonically toward the coast. As the oceanic portion of the plate carrying the islands subducted, the heat caused volcanic activity both along the continental margin and also on the islands, sending volcanic rocks into the sea between them. Ongoing erosion also caused sediment from both areas, to be deposited on the seabed between them, eventually forming sedimentary rock. As the land masses collided and were welded together, the seafloor between them was folded. Some of the seafloor was carried downward to where the accumulated volcanic and sedimentary rocks were altered metamorphically. These are the local foundation or basement rocks that form much of the McDowell Mountains, with metamorphic sandstone called quartzite in the western area, and metamorphic rhyolite, which is a form of volcanic lava, in the southern portion. These rocks are similar in appearance and formed at roughly the same time and in the same way. The difference is that quartzite started as sedimentary rock and metarhyolite was volcanic in origin. Quartzite is common along the gateway trails, and metarhyolite is found along the Lost Dog Wash area trails. Note that most rocks we see along the trails have a surface coating caused by exposure to air and water that may disguise their true appearance. Look for a clean, recently broken interior surface to see what a rock really looks like. About 1.4 billion years ago, these foundation rocks, already 300 million years old, were intruded by an upswelling of magma from below. The magma cooled and solidified into granite underneath the older metamorphic rock. We tend to think of the oldest rock being on the bottom, like in the Grand Canyon, with younger layers of rock deposited on top of it. But in this case, the younger rock formed below the older. This granite is visible in the northern and eastern parts of the Tom's Thumb Trail, and there's a little in places on the eastern part of the Sunrise Trail. Most of the mountains in northern Scottsdale also are made of this granite. These two major layers are clearly visible in several mountain ranges. To the northeast of us, the Mazatzels are made of 1.4 billion year old granite that formed beneath even older metamorphic quartzite. The different rocks are revealed in the different erosional patterns visible on four peaks. The softer granite at the bottom eroded into rounded forms, whereas the harder quartzite above formed the steeper, more jagged peaks. In the McDowells, the two layers are side by side rather than stacked vertically, with the granite in the northeast area and the remainder mostly the older metamorphic rock. The layers have been tilted onto their sides by geologic events that occurred after the granite was formed. North of the McDowells, 
Only the granite is exposed in the various small mountains in northern Scottsdale. Most of the granite in Scottsdale is distinctive due to its high percentage of quartz, one of the three main components of granite, along with black biotite mica and yellowish or pinkish feldspar compounds. The granite in this area often has very large milky quartz crystals, which are called phenocrysts. The granite at Pinnacle Peak is particularly striking in this regard. The large mineral grains in most of our local granite cause it to erode easily. It's not good material for countertops. Because it has a uniform structure, it erodes randomly with no preferred direction of breakage. The result is rounded forms called spheroidal weathering. Note that some of the granite in the area has smaller grains probably because it cooled faster than the more coarse-grained rock. This finer-grained granite is somewhat harder and doesn't erode quite as easily as the other variety, forming larger exposed surfaces with fewer cracks. Some of the climbing areas in the northeastern McDowell's consist of this finer-grained granite. Large granite masses tend to erode in place. Small cracks are widened by water flow, the freeze-thaw cycle, etc., until they extend all the way through a mass, effectively dividing it. As this process repeats over many thousands of years, eventually the once solid mass resembles a pile of boulders. Now, obviously, boulders do occasionally fall off the mass and roll down to other places. But most of what look like stacks of boulders gathered together actually are single granite masses that have divided in place into smaller pieces. The metamorphic rock that makes up most of the southern and western McDowell's looks quite different from the granite. First, it has much finer grains, sometimes feeling glassy or fairly smooth to the touch. The way that metamorphic rocks form under heat and pressure causes physical and chemical changes in the rock. The chemical changes often are chemical reactions involving trace elements in the rock which can produce bright colors. Green rock, for example, can reflect the presence of copper, but it also can be caused by chlorine, some forms of iron, and various combinations of calcium and aluminum, among others. Pink or red usually indicates the presence of iron. So distinct colors in rock often are a clue that it's metamorphic. The temperature and pressure deep underground that form metamorphic rock can cause the atoms in the rock to line up in sheets. When this occurs, the bonds between the atoms in a single sheet are stronger than the bonds between adjacent parallel sheets. This new arrangement means that the metamorphic rock now has a preferred direction in which to break when subjected to erosional forces, unlike the more uniform granite. As a result, exposed metamorphic rock often has flatter surfaces, sharper and straighter edges, and more acute angles than does granite or sedimentary rock. As you walk along the trails in the preserve, it's not hard to distinguish the metamorphic rock from the granite, especially when they're side by side as in some places along the Sunrise, East End, and Tom Stum trails. After the drama of the formation of our foundation metamorphic rocks during the creation of a new continent, and then the intrusion into them by a massive magma upswelling from the Earth's interior, things got relatively quiet, until quite recently, geologically speaking. In fact, our rocks spent 
most of the next billion years or so underwater. 